Within the four walls of a lively and active college situated in the heart of Columbia, South Carolina, Samantha Lee Josephson, a promising young lady, faced a devastating death after a lively night party. Her unforeseen demise highlighted the dangers lurking in our everyday lives and introduced measures to save many others. She was a warm-hearted individual at the University of South Carolina campus, a spirited and ambitious young lady. Who would have thought a usual night out would result in her demise? Samantha Lee Josephson spent her first few years in Robbinsville, New Jersey. She was born into the family of Seymour and Marcy Josephson when they still lived in Princeton, New Jersey. She majored in political science at the University of South Carolina. At the time of her passing, Samantha was a senior in college, planning to graduate in 2019. She had been accepted to Drexel University's School of Law on a full scholarship, where she intended to pursue a degree in international law. Additionally, she received a partial scholarship to Rutgers. Samantha was indeed a brainiac, and her ultimate goal was to become an international lawyer. Like every other college girl, with her stunning beauty and radiant smile, she shared a close bond with her fine, young, and caring boyfriend, Greg. She was actively involved in the Alpha Gamma Delta sorority and had the opportunity to study abroad in Barcelona, as well as travel to Madrid and Paris. Despite Samantha's upcoming law school journey and the difficulties it would throw into their relationship, Greg was committed to moving in with her and providing unwavering support. The great lovers maintained daily contact through texts, calls, video calls, and any other way possible to keep in touch planning and setting goals for the future they were to have together. On the eve of March 28, 2019, Samantha made plans to socialize the next day with her roommate and friends in Columbia, South Carolina. But little did she know, the situation would take a troubling turn, preventing her from returning to her apartment. Samantha was feeling down after hearing about a family member's illness and needed a distraction. Going out with friends seemed like a good way to lift her spirits. Greg, Samantha's boyfriend, couldn't join them as he was in his hometown at the time. Despite this, he encouraged Samantha to go out and enjoy herself with her roommate and friends. The group of friends, including Samantha, gathered and visited several bars before eventually settling at the Bird Dog Bar in Five Points a popular area for students to socialize and enjoy nightlife. She was having a great time with her friends, but Samantha continuously texted Greg, the love of her life, pleading with him to make the two-hour drive to Columbia to be with her, desperate for her human-sized emotional support teddy bear. Because the lovebirds had plans to see each other the following weekend, Greg held firm with his decision not to yield to her lady-in-distress call Nonetheless, he continued to text with her. Samantha called an Uber at about 2 a.m. because she was tired and decided to return to her apartment all by herself. At that time, the app was quite popular as a shared ride app, so many people were already using it. But today, nature sent her way a messenger of the Grim Reaper. While waiting for her Uber around 2.04 a.m., Samantha picked up her phone and made a call to her sweetheart, Greg. She informed him she was heading home and had already requested an Uber. Taking Uber rides had become a normal thing for her since she had ordered numerous rides to safely navigate the distance from bars. Samantha was dressed in an orange shirt and black pants at the time. Security cameras captured her approaching the vehicle. Moments after requesting the ride, a car arrived at the curb where Samantha and other tired patrons waited for their lifts. She realized it wasn't her ride. She quickly turned around and returned to her spot on the sidewalk. A black Chevrolet Impala, driven by a man later identified as Nathaniel David Rowland, pulled up in front of her after some time. Samantha said goodbye to Greg on the phone and, assuming it was her ride, exchanged a quick word with the driver before climbing into the back seat. Once inside, the car promptly sped off. After a while, the Uber Samantha had ordered 
arrived at the designated pickup location. The driver searched for his customer and after a fruitless search, canceled the request and left. From that point onward, only Samantha and the man driving the Impala knew she had mistakenly entered the wrong car. It was later discovered, according to the CCTV footage, that the black Chevrolet Impala had observed the girls around the area circling the area multiple times before focusing on Samantha, making her his prey. It was widely known among those familiar with Five Points that students gathered on the streets after bars closed to await their rides. Observing the driver navigate the area led to the conclusion that he had a deliberate intent that night. Greg used the Find My Friends app on Samantha's phone to monitor her. He realized that his Juliet was heading in the opposite direction of her apartment. After a while, concluding and not thinking much of it, considering she might be going to a friend's house, he sent a text to Samantha to check on her and possibly know why she wasn't heading to her apartment as she said. Concerned about the lady of his dreams, Greg then attempted to call Samantha, but she did not pick up her phone. Undeterred and unrelenting, he continued to text her several times, noticing that his messages were delivered but remained unread, indicating Samantha had not seen them. This was unusual, as Samantha's phone location, which Greg had been monitoring, suddenly stopped updating, a development that deeply alarmed him and had never happened before in the duration of their time together. Initially considering the possibility that Samantha had left her phone in the Uber, Greg proceeded to contact her friends and roommate to inquire about her whereabouts or if they had heard from her. Unfortunately, no one had any information about Samantha's location. Greg held on to hope that she would return home, and by morning she would contact him one way or another. He tried and got some sleep amidst the uncertainty. Samantha was still nowhere to be found the next morning, causing deep concern among her roommates who, without hesitation, reported her disappearance to the authorities. Greg, deeply worried, drove the two hours she begged him to drive last night to Columbia to join the search for his lost love. Just after three to four hours after the missing person report was filed, a group of turkey hunters discovered the body of a young woman in a wooded area near New Zion. It was later confirmed that the deceased was Samantha Josephson. Less than 24 hours after she was last seen on surveillance footage entering a black car, her body was found approximately 65 miles from Five Points. The hunters immediately dialed 911 prompting a swift response from local sheriff's office personnel. Following an autopsy, and still heartstruck and in total disbelief of the body they just found, it became evident that Samantha had been brutally attacked. Covering her face, head, neck, hands, upper body, legs and feet, her body was brutally stabbed, a disturbing 120 times. Following the police's investigation, Evidence suggested that she had desperately tried to shield herself from a very sharp tool making contact with her body, resulting in severe damage to her fingernails. The wounds indicated she was assaulted with a double-edged knife and then dragged into the woods. The reports of the autopsy further brought to our conclusions that Samantha suffered extensive blood loss. Her body contained only 20 millimeters of blood, a fraction, a very little fraction, of the normal amount. Investigators hopped on the case and found surveillance footage retrieved from the bar that night showing Samantha entering a black Chevrolet Impala. The investigators noted the car in question had circled the block multiple times, indicating that the driver was driving around and looking for potential prey. The conclusion was that Samantha had hopped into the wrong ride and it turned out to be a killer believing it had to be her Uber. Not long after, the actual Uber driver arrived and after a fruitless search for his customer, canceled the ride. It was discovered that Samantha was killed shortly after she was taken away by the wrong ride. 
a few great minds collided and speculated that the car's childproof locks were engaged, which could have obviously prevented Samantha from escaping the inside of the vehicle. The investigators quickly put out the descriptions of the vehicle to the public in hopes of apprehending the perpetrator before he could strike again. Just a few hours in, Samantha's car was found. A few officers on routine patrol spotted the black Chevrolet Impala in the vicinity where Samantha was abducted. Upon pulling over the vehicle around 3 a.m. on March 30th, the driver fled on foot but was apprehended after a brief chase. The man was identified as 24-year-old Nathaniel Rowland, a resident of New Zion. Inside the car, officers discovered a child's car seat surrounded by what appeared to be bloodstains, prompting them to call for backup under suspicion of a crime scene. The main men took over the case, the homicide detectives. They scanned through the car as if their whole existence was created to find out who committed this murder. They found substantial amounts of blood on the passenger seat, in the trunk, and a bloody footprint on one of the rear windows. Roland had attempted to sell Samantha's phone at a pawn shop earlier that day, but left it in the car after declining the offer. The detectives found the phone lying on the car floor. The detectives also noted that the car was attempted to be cleaned in order to hide the murder, using substances like bleach, window cleaner, and antibacterial wipes, although blood remnants remained. Despite mounting evidence against him, Roland steadfastly denied involvement in Samantha's abduction and murder. During interrogation, after a physical examination post-arrest, traces of Samantha's DNA under Roland's fingernails were revealed, further implicating him in the crime. As it usually plays out in these scenarios, Samantha's genetic material was found on Nathaniel Rowland, but none of his DNA was detected on her. The detectives, thinking through the incident that took the dear life of Greg's lover, found even more disturbing details. From the evidence gathered and scenarios played out, the detectives speculated that Samantha fell victim to a sudden, vicious attack. With the activated childproof locks in Roland's car at the time of his arrest, it showed that their speculation was true, and she had no way to escape except by breaking the glass, which would have been difficult for her. This led investigators to believe he engaged the child lock immediately after Samantha entered the vehicle, trapping her inside. Defenseless and caught off guard, Samantha had no way to defend herself from such vicious attacks from the man she mistook for her Uber driver. Roland, without empathy, repeatedly drove his two-edged knife through her. Overwhelmed by the ferocity of the attack, Samantha fought back, resulting in multiple stab wounds to her hands and severe damage to her fingernails. The sheer intensity of the assault made Samantha unable to land even a single scratch on her attacker, thus explaining the absence of rolling skin cells under her nails. After the brutal act, detectives reckoned that Roland drove to a remote farmer's access road in New Zion, a location only familiar to locals and disposed of Samantha's body in the nearby woods. Given his longtime residency just minutes from where Samantha's remains were found, this further incriminated him. Roland, upon returning home, spent much of the day using social media as if nothing had happened. More background investigations revealed that Roland was a prior felony ex-convict in October 2018 for obtaining property under false pretenses a devout churchgoer, and also attended South Carolina State University in 2017 without a clear record of graduation or current employment. The never-ending list kept on going as deeper investigations only pulled out more dirt on Roland. Roland was implicated in a carjacking where he and another man assaulted a woman, forcing her to drive to an ATM to withdraw money and subsequently robbing her at home, including stealing a PlayStation 4. Although not convicted of robbery, Roland sold some of the stolen items. More incriminating evidence was found in the trash bins when the detective searched his girlfriend Maria Howard's apartment in New Zion. A sock and bandana allegedly belonging to Roland 
heavily stained with Samantha's blood, a blood-stained white sheet, a roll of duct tape, bleach wipes with blood traces, and a double-bladed knife with apparent blood on it. Without hesitation, subsequent tests confirmed that the blood on these items matched Samantha Josephson's DNA. The ensuing trial was emotionally trying for Samantha's family. With evidence mounting up to the ceiling, Roland was initially charged with weapon possession during a violent crime, kidnapping, and murder of Samantha Josephson. In the summer of 2021, the trial commenced. Roland's defense team based their argument for his innocence primarily on the lack of his DNA found on Samantha as their main defense strategy. On the other hand, the prosecutors presented a finely filed case against Nathaniel Rowland, countering his claims of innocence with proof, including CCTV footage showing Rowland's car picking up Samantha in five points, her bloodstains all over the car, bloody footprints of the deceased on the back window of the car, and the fact that he attempted to use her bank card at an ATM after disposing of her body. The proximity of his home was also put in play against him, added with the fact that cell phone trackers tracked the whereabouts of their phones at the time of the murder and proved them to be in the same place. The prosecutors kept the evidence rolling in as they invited a handwriting expert to testify. It was concluded that Roland's handwriting was identical to that of a list found on a piece of paper in his home, which included items such as duct tape, gloves, a flip phone, gasoline, and matches, indicating that the murder was well and meticulously planned. Throughout the trial, 31 witnesses were called to testify. Among them was an individual who saw Roland cleaning the weapon, the pawn shop owner to whom he attempted to sell Samantha's cell phone, and his ex-girlfriend, who claimed her daughter had blood on her shoe after being in Roland's car post-murder. In stark contrast, Roland called no witnesses, and none of his family members testified in his defense. Despite the mounting evidence, Roland maintained his innocence and pleaded with the judge. The jury took only an hour to deliberate before delivering a guilty verdict. Nathaniel Roland was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. In the aftermath of Samantha's tragic murder, her parents, Seymour and Marcy Josephson, dedicated themselves to preventing similar incidents. They established the What's My Name Foundation, urging people of all ages to ask rideshare drivers to identify them by name before entering a vehicle. They also promoted a safety protocol called SAMI, Stop, Ask, Match, and Inform, to encourage vigilance among rideshare users. The rideshare industry responded by introducing safeguards, including a personalized four-digit code for riders to confirm their driver through the app. Samantha's untimely death left a huge void in the hearts of her family and friends, leaving them with nothing but pain and memory stricken with a remarkably large amount of pain and sorrow. Her story serves as a reminder of the unpredictability of tragedy and the importance for us all to be vigilant, empathetic, and collectively put in efforts to ensure each other's safety. Please share to create awareness because there might be other people as sick as Roland, and if you enjoyed this video, like and leave your thoughts in the comments section below. Also, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss our daily updates.